I'm joined here by Justin Kelly. You might know him from Jesse from Hudson and Rex, or I believe it's, is it Noah, right? Noah from Noah, the latest yeah, buzz. Yeah, Noah from the latest buzz. The yeah. latest buzz. <laughs> yeah, he loved it. He loved it when I did it the first time. Uh, <laughs> Je or just, I almost called him Jesse, see? Uh, Justin, tell me what people can expect when listening to this episode. A lot of laughs, a lot of, lot of uh, a theory. Of a lot of tears. <laughs> There's, uh, you know, if you if you guys are okay with, you know, kind of sweating through the 20, 25 minutes where we're just crying at each other, um, then you'll really enjoy this podcast. Justin. How you doing, Welcome man? To Tobin tonight, man. Uh, Thank you. I, I, I know that you're dealing with, you know, Newfoundland, a lot of the East Coast filming Hudson and Rex. Yeah. I, I wanted to make you feel a little bit at home. So I oh, wore nice. a Toronto Maple Leafs jersey. Hey, that is much appreciated. Thank you. Unless you go, unless you so go for like Montreal. Yeah. Then Are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, then we can't be talking. We, no, we exactly. Well, well, we, thank you for coming, Justin. It was a great interview. No. Um, <laughs> Justin, the, the one thing I want to tease you with a little bit, because yeah. it is Newfoundland, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, I grew up watching a lot of Radio Free Roscoe, per se. That's how okay. I kind of got into broadcasting. Nice. And then, when I got a little bit older, I heard, you know, oh, the latest buzz. <laughs> do, do, people, do, people, do people torment you on that? You know, it's uh, it's been a few years. Um, it still <laughs> creeps up once in a while. Uh, yeah, I think, when did we finish that show? We finished that show, like... God, it must have been, I think it's oh, definitely over 10 years ago. Yeah, like 13 years ago, we finished that. Um, so, there, you know, there was definitely, they're like, are you that spiky haired kid from uh, that that show? It's, well, I, yeah. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you full credit because like, you you know, there are some shows you'll look back and you remember the, the person from like, you know, if I look at Saved by the Bell or A Boy Meets uh -huh. World, it's like, you can go on do much other things. And believe me, they have like Jalel White continues to act but everyone mm -hmm. keeps calling him Urkel. It's sad, yeah. but you know, it's, it is what it is. But I love the fact that when I looked it up, so I kind of kind of got into Hudson and Rex just through quarantine. Got to okay. love quarantine. Yeah. And it's I a was, good show to binge. Yeah, There's a yeah, lot of episodes. Ab There's absolutely. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, so I was there and I was sitting down and I was watching it and I, I looked at it and I was like, okay, they got a good cast. I don't know if it's intentional, but like you have all these different backgrounds mm -hmm. and I kept on saying to one of my friends and I think it was like my mom, I, I tried out on my mom first and told a couple of my friends just, you know, like testing jokes out. And I was like, man, Toby McGuire, is that his like brother there? Because that looks like, I was like, that's like Superman to me. And then my mom was like, you mean Clark Kent? And I was like, no, but well, now I see what I mean, saying. that's a huge compliment. It, it is. Hey, I you mean, know? Toby McGuire alone is a huge compliment. I mean, exactly. that's the Spider-Man that I grew up with. Uh, <laughs> so I will take that. Yeah. It's his, his brother. <laughs> jo Joni McGuire. I don't know. <laughs> Tony, Tony McGuire. Tony McGuire. There we go. Like, hey, what yeah. are you doing? I'm yeah. Tony McGuire. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a famous brother. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, but yeah, like when I was watching it, and then it never dawned on me until I kind of did a bit of research. I was like, oh, he was on like the latest buzz. I was yeah. like, okay, I got to torment him a little bit about that, but I only Let's for research, it. only for research. <laughs> so I feel like you're safe. You're a bit nice. safe until this gets posted, and then people will go back. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, we did that. I mean, we did that so long ago. That was that was my first show. That was um yeah, that was an experience for sure. It was we had such a great time. Uh uh yeah, I'm still in touch with Monroe. He's he's still my best friend after all these years. Um talked to him yesterday actually. Um but yeah, you know, it, it is nice when it does creep up because you know I because I haven't seen it in a while and I haven't heard people talk about it in a while. It's, it's when it does come up, it is refreshing. And it's like, Oh, that show, like people are still watching that show and, and enjoying it and wherever they can find it. I mean, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't know at this point if there are reruns or anything like that, but, but it's just, it's, it's great to hear just cause we had a great time shooting it. Yeah. It, it's it and really the only, and like, like I mentioned the, the reason that I brought it up was cause so, I kind of got into media through Radio Free Roscoe. That was my thing. Like, do I, and then when I found I, was, out I watched later, that show too. That was, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Brent Piaskowski. And to, find, and to find out, like, it was, you know, Canadian content. We actually had, like, Kate yeah. Todd on an episode to talk about it. And I was like, oh, this oh, is cool. kind of cool. But 
when seeing the latest buzz, it went from like the radio side to kind of the magazine side. Yeah. And you still yeah. had one of the, I can't remember her name now. I, I feel bad for not remembering, but like she was kind of the voice of Cougar Radio, ended up being okay. kind of the managing director of this magazine. But oh, Janelle, I love yeah. 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 And I love when you look back at it, like you have different diversity in that, but different. It's almost like you're catering it to the young crowd at that time because you had the one with the spiky hair, the one that yeah. was very fashionably done, the one that was like a skater kid. And I'm like, looking back, I'm like, I tried all three of those uh, <laughs> genres. None of them worked. <laughs> I, I did too. Like it was, <laughs> I, I loved it because, yeah, the, I felt like the music was something. I mean, I skateboarded for a while and I gave up on that after a couple of years. And, uh, but that was, but that was the thing. It's that every, yeah, their every character had their own their own style and fit this, you know, fit in this uh, genre of what they were doing, what they were talking about. And I, I was just, I felt lucky enough that because that I was doing music, and I because I was the kid also that was like always listening to stuff that nobody else was. And so I would try, I, I would think it was the coolest thing. Like my brother and I were listening to like seventies prog music and old Genesis and. Jethro Tull and stuff, and I'd, I'd go to parties. I'd be like, "Have you guys heard this Jethro Tull record?" And they're like, "No, we're fourteen. <laughs> like, <laughs> we're fourteen years old. What are you talking about?" Yeah, um, we're listening to like you know what's popular on the radio today. Yeah, like, and, I'm, and I'm like, who? Yeah, I'm like who's uh, who's this uh, Justin Bieber? I mean, uh, <laughs> have you guys not listened to Emerson, Lake, and Palmer? <laughs> it would just get like more and more obscure. But I loved it. I mean, I loved being the music guy in that, and and. Uh, because that was something that I could definitely, you know. Uh, uh, Just like, like you know, really like, to, yeah, like, really it's, yeah. It's like your, yeah. like, it's like your niche, like your thing, where it's like, hey, you want to hear like obscure music that you've never heard? Totally, Justin. Yeah, he, he has. Be that. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'd bring my bass to high school. I used to play bass, and I would just be like, how, how about this? Uh, have you heard this this song from uh, this Yes album? And they're like, no. <laughs> You're like, so in my mind, you're like the opposite of like what I call the 90s guitar guy, where it's like you go to like any live or not a live concert, but you go to any kind of dimly lit karaoke night. And it's like, it's like, yeah, we're going to do karaoke in like 10 minutes. Yeah. But first, Jeff's going to come up and play some of his own original material. Like, great. I love Jeff. And then the first yeah. thing he comes up is like, so maybe you're like, that's Oasis. Yeah. It's, it's like if I have to hear Oasis one more time. I have a funny story about that. Actually, I did a, I did karaoke one time, and it just kind of goes into that whole um, question of what's this guy doing. Yes. Um, but I I went with a buddy of mine to this karaoke place here in Toronto, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do. I was on a big Elton John kick. I mean, I still am. I always am. But I was like, I'm gonna do Love Lies Bleeding, and which is like, it's Funeral for a Friend and Love Lies Bleeding, which is this first track off off uh, one of his albums, and it's like an eight minute song, and I thought that if that and the the the, um, the lyrics don't even start until like four and a half minutes into the song. Oh wow! And I thought that is like, oh, this is great. This is this is a karaoke song, so it's only going to be like the last three and a half minutes. And I got up there, and they started playing the four and a half minute instrumental part. So I was just kind of like standing up there, just like gets better, guys. Just 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 you wait. Just wait. It's going to be fantastic. <laughs> and um, yeah. A lot of people were looking at me with questionable looks, but yeah. <laughs> That's when you get up the next time and just do the tequila, whatever, the, like the tequila. I know. Tequila. They're just still like, he, here's the guy who takes forever to start. And the next minute it's like, tequila. It's like, <laughs> oh, he threw us for a loop. Exactly. It's like, oh, good. At least we get to drink tequila and listen to this guy saunter on. But anyway, Justin, to get into, I guess, a little bit of the, the Hudson and Rex side, mm -hmm. how did you essentially – get cast in this role because you know i'm being very polite to you right now but if someone told me that role was available we would have to go and i don't mean fight i mean like <laughs> i'm sure they still pick you i'm sure they still pick you they'd be like this guy was on the latest buzz i don't know man grassy what have you done i'd be like i'm sorry i was away getting a communications degree you're like no one knows newfoundland better than me i live in newfoundland <laughs> oh yeah and then and then see that's where they'd call you bluff because they're like okay take us down to water street like what what street 
What yeah. street is that? So where, where are you? For, you're, are you in Whitless Bay? Did you say? Are you? Yeah, yeah. So okay. I grew up in the Ghouls. I, when I came back home, my parents decided, "Hey, let's not tell Brian we're moving to Whitless Bay." Okay, <laughs> maybe now is a good time to tell Brian we're moving to Whitless Bay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like I, I know parts. Actually, it's funny because when you look at like say the Jelly Bean houses downtown. Yeah. Um, I could get this wrong. My mom will probably correct me after when this episode premieres or whatever. <laughs> but uh, my uncle or my great uncle actually lives in between those houses. So like a lot of the famous scenery you see, he was like another street or so in between that. But okay. um, yeah, if someone asked me today, what is that street? What is that? I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm from here, but I'm glad to be a Newfoundlander, but don't get too personal with me. Cause then you're going to expose me for not being a Newfoundlander. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a Newfoundlander. Okay. Yeah, I, That's it. I didn't have to take no tests. I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> I was born and raised here. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I haven't been out to the, uh, to the Goulds. Um, you know, we, we film pretty much we like our, our studios in Mount Pearl. Okay. Um, and then, you know, yeah. all of our exterior stuff for the most part is uh, St. John's. But uh, but yeah, I mean to answer your question, it was it was a pretty quick uh, process. Um, I think I think they had been looking to cast the character for a while. I I, I had gotten an email about it, and it was uh, it was like, yeah, we're looking. Do you want to audition for this this character, Jesse? And and they're like, it's two months in in St. John's from October to December, and and uh, and that was sort of it. I did one audition, and then. Probably about a week later, I found out I got it, and we, uh, and then in October we were filming in St. John's, and then eight episodes suddenly turned to sixteen episodes, and then sixteen turned into another sixteen, and then another. So it's been a pretty, it hap it, it all happened really fast, um, and you know, in the best way possible because you know we we're, you know, I was able to live out in St. John's, which was on a bucket list. Like I, I had never been out to Newfoundland at the time, and I. Uh, had heard so much about it, and I, I didn't realize I'd be I'd be out there to the extent that I was out there. But um, but it was it was great. It all kind of worked out. Um, so yeah, it was a really quick process, but uh, but it, it was nice. It was, it's nice nice to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I, I think it's kind of interesting because when you look at say different parts where they show scenes, of course, in Hudson and Rex. Now we've had say Republic of Doyle down here before. Right. Like, again. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but the different scenes that kind of Hudson and Rex implements, like I look at them like, okay, I know where that place is too. That's interesting. Like, Oh geez, that's right around from like where I used to work or where I'm totally. working now kind of thing. So it's cool to get those scenes in there, but the biggest thing, and I hope this isn't something that's uh, going to make people mad, but you know, when I see the scenery of the police, where the police thing is, or like police academy or whatever. That's, that's or like, the university. That's yeah, mine. I kept on, <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I'm glad you brought it yeah. up because I kept on telling my mom, I'm like, that is the blue building where when I went to Mun for like the year that I did. Yeah. Uh, that's like, that's right across. And mom was like, no, it's not. I'm like, how are you not seeing that? Like, <laughs> there's not a lot of blue buildings here. Yeah. I'm like, and yeah. look. I, and I was like stopping it, like freeze framing it and going here, here, here. Look at yeah. this. And then she finally bought into it. But I mean, there's always elements to it, like with anything, with any show, like For sure. I, I always find it crushing. And I mean, absolutely crushing when you look at like full house, family matters, boy meets world. And they are like Philly, like Chicago. And then you talk to the actors like, no man, that was filmed in LA. I'm like, yeah, what are you doing? What are you doing? Friends, like friends <laughs> was like New York in friends is like a character in the show essentially. And, yeah. and they're like, Oh, they filmed it in, you know, in a studio in LA. And it's, yeah. it, it like, is stop. a little heartbreaking <laughs> when yeah, you find stop. the truth about it. And yeah. that's, but that's what I really like about, you know, what we do on this show is that, you know, we, we have moments where we're like, okay, this isn't actually the police station. And yeah. anybody who lived outside of Newfoundland wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily know that. Um, but we, the good thing is, is that we don't mask, uh, we don't ask St. John's or Newfoundland to be another place. And that's, you know, that happens to Toronto all the time where, you know, big projects come to shoot here and, and it's like New York or it's Chicago or, and it's like, no, it's not the scene. Tower. Like you can see the scene tower in the reflection yeah. of that building. It's Toronto. And it's always, and I've always, you know, I'm born and raised here in Toronto and I, I I'm, I'm always refreshed as a local to see when a movie comes out and it actually takes place in Toronto. So I can totally understand, like, and I, and that's what I'm really happy about with this with this show is that we celebrate Newfoundland and and we you know 
it is a character in the show because it, it's, I mean, the scenery is just stunning. And, and, you know, in the, in the three months out of the year that you have grass and not rain <laughs> and summer and all that stuff, but, but yeah, we do, we, we celebrate it. And, and um, yeah, that's a really, really good part about the, about the show. I think it's interesting. Cause like when you mentioned, of course, when like places come and film in Toronto and they don't really give it credit or they, yeah. they kind of mask it a little bit. I, I always think it's, it's a double-edged sword because there's a side of you that you feel like a niche audience where you know it, but you're like, why couldn't you just at least elaborate? But shows like Suits, you know, I know yeah. there's parts of Suits that they film just say on the top of a Toronto like building uh, or in Toronto, but they don't want to mask that as Toronto because like you're you're talking corporate New York, like you know, bad. Totally. New York. Why why would you be like? And then they went to Toronto. It's yeah. Like, Wow, I was so invested with the dark music, the heavy like yeah. you better you better get on her ass, otherwise you're yeah. fired. Yeah. And it's like, is that the CN Tower in the background? I'm less scared. Totally. <laughs> suddenly yeah. it's a little bit more suddenly these suits have are like they're a little bit more polite <laughs> than I thought they yeah. would be. Oh, I'm sorry. In, in, I'm sorry, I'll get on that right away. Do you want me to get you a Tim Hortons donut while I'm down? I'd be like, yeah, exactly. is this a crossover episode of suits? Did they come yeah. to Canada? What? <laughs> Like, um, totally. but yeah, I do. I do like that. And the other thing I was going to mention as well, of course, when you're talking about St. John's and just uh -huh. embracing it, uh, there are points in the episodes. Like I like how you implement Newfoundland actors in a way, but like not outright like, Hey, we've had Mary Walsh on everyone knows Mary Walsh or yeah, now yeah. Hockle, but you don't put them as, Hey, this is Mary Wal or Mary Walsh. She's going to be on the show. It's like you give right. her a character. The yeah, only one yeah. That I will ever be up a little bit upset about but i didn't pitch it so it's not my like i can't really be like oh man how come they didn't take it like i loved how they used mary walsh because it's yeah, like she was, and she was so great in that, and, and in she that can play almost like anything right yeah but yeah i i was just like man you had alan alan hocko on and you made him you were like making him like a bad a bad guy which is cool i got the song treble treble from that yeah. like the, the closing credits you know, shout out to Treble because they actually came on because I watched that episode. Nice. Um, but I was like, man, how do you not have this as a crossover episode where somehow you guys can't solve this and you bring in oh, Alan yeah. Rocco? Like, I get it. I, I totally get it. And you know what? I think the the one thing that did cross over is his leather jacket. You know, thankfully, I think, you know, Alan Hawko's leather jacket budget for, uh, <laughs> for Doyle and Hudson and Rex, you know, they went hand in hand. But I do get that. I think there is something that's, really uh cool about um the idea of extending the universe of hudson and rex to uh republic of doyle and and uh because those that's the thing like i mean i i don't i don't remember how long doyle went but it it was the it was the newfoundland show for the longest oh, yeah. time right and and it's i mean it's really cool that would that we have these yeah, I, I totally see what you're saying. I, I wish we did that. I, I think like, you know, um, like just I know it's already been used. I think in like I think he's in the market season three, maybe that I think he was used or but just just say if you give it maybe till season four, season five, bring him back in. And oh, like, yeah, right. You can still implement it. It's just that I would have thought instantly when I seen an Alan Hocko crossover, I was like, dude, there's going to be like this thing where he's a badass right now. But at the end of it, we they find out that, you know, he brings in his team it's almost like guys where have you been all these years kind of thing but mm -hmm. to each their own mm -hmm. but yeah you know what i think um I, I feel like this show has has the legs to go on for a long time and i think if we give it enough give it enough time in between we we could bring him back in another you know yeah in some some sort of other <laughs> yeah other exactly. way. you have to but i i love that comment of like the leather check <laughs> it's almost like when you go to the meeting it's like it's like, Alan, we're so glad you're coming in on the show. It's like, here's here's what we got you to do. And he's like, okay, one thing, my leather jacket. They're like, like, okay, that's a deal breaker. Is deal. That Levi's? Is, that, uh, is that Levi's? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's like, like, he, like, he, like, he like walks out, like, you know how things are with like, you know, <laughs> dealing with agents and stuff. He's like, I love the episode, but I don't have the heart to tell him that they didn't put in my leather jacket. He's like, no yeah. problem. He like walks back in here. He's like, can you right there where it says wardrobe, Leather jacket, there, done. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Just like, yeah. uh, um, you know, Alan was really, uh, really peeved that he didn't, his leather jacket didn't make it into the episode. We just wanted to get a little bit of clarity on that. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I don't think I would. would I would have loved to work with him. Um, you know, he was. I, that's the thing. Like the stuff that I do, I, I, I do spend a great deal of 
you know, the show in the studio. And I, I don't often get to hang out with the, uh, hang out with the, the guest stars. I mean, there was one recently that I think the episode just aired, so I'm not spoiling anything, but, uh, we, you know, we brought, uh, Alan Doyle back oh, and wow. we, uh, okay. yeah. So we had him show up in the studio and that was great. Um, and, uh, yeah, it does, it doesn't happen often, but you know, I'm hoping to get some screen time, it, you know, if they do bring Alan Hocko back to some degree, maybe, maybe he just shows up as like, He's like Jesse's long lost father or something like that. I'm <laughs> pretty sure he's not. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. I mean, they've done it in other sitcoms, right? Like you, you see one character kind of getting like written off or in a different role. Like I know friends used Estelle for the agent, but if you look, if you look back in the future ep or like the previous episode, she's like in the uh, hospital room when, mm -hmm. right. So like, and, and again, you have to really Absolutely. watch it to kind of implement this stuff, but absolutely. I, I love that again. You use these different actors and actresses. I there, I was a little bit peeved when because um, again they were sending me out stuff because I, I was interested in being on the show and yeah. they sent me out a line or like a two I think there was a few roles but I've never fit the mold of what they were looking for and I was like that's cool but then I look at the episode to see who did and I'm like okay cool that's the right that's the right gist but there was right. one episode in particular and again it's like just missing the moment I think by a few maybe a few weeks but. They had the one where it was like a podcast. And of course, uh -huh. that's the one that Mary Walsh was in. And I was like, I am right. a Newfoundlander with a podcast. How <laughs> how did I not? Like, Do I not I... fit the bill to the 10th degree? <laughs> yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> come on. If, if you want me to be an ass, I mean, like, I am the perfect person to be an ass. Yeah. Like, make me throw Jesse in the water where he almost, like, dies. Oh, yeah. Like That was the thing. There, yeah, there were, there were definitely a couple episodes that, that you know, the first three episodes of the uh, of the series, Jesse has a near death experience, and I feel like they were like, you know, let's just keep him in the studio. Let's keep him out of trouble. Yeah. And, I like uh, to me that was like the episode. So it's after coming on a few times, but I love watching it because again, I I like that this is what makes a really good TV show. Like I know you kind of buy, kind of got to buy into it. It's like being a wrestling fan. Like you know when someone's like hulking up or like doing this, and the act, yeah. then the person's like, oh my god, it's like you could easily just go over and be like, stop it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. Do that, but completely. I know, like a they, like watching a horror movie. You're like, you don't have to go into the basement. I horror movies you know? are just to me. I never watch them, but it's just they're like, is anybody home? And yeah. it's like, no. I'm like, why are you yelling? There, there are so many other things you can do in a horror movie that a lot of characters don't do to yeah. avoid being murdered. Yeah, it's like, like, is someone out there? Let me proceed to go out there. Like, or yeah. there's a window. <laughs> yeah. Um, but. Or just drive away. Yeah. Just drive away. Get in your car if, yeah. if it seems sketchy. Yeah. Go. <laughs> they're like they're like I live for the sketchiness. I am not leaving this yeah. place. It's like well that's on you then. Don't don't come to me at the end of the movie and make me feel bad. It's on yeah. you. Uh, but I, I I do like how like I said you you implement all these different characters. But for me when I'm watching the one that keeps on coming up was the one of I I, I don't know the, the title of it. I just know that you're pretending kind of to be in the student and yeah. then the student kind of gives you i guess it's like overdrive or something and i like how at the end of that episode it's kind of like yeah he wants to see you in his office and you're like oh it's gonna be on my record and then they like throw you like this bash i'm like hold on a second even though it's all sketched out I'm like what mother like what kind of mother effort would just bring in this person that almost dies and be like yeah we're gonna give you an x on that because like we're gonna have to let you go yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm sorry, you almost you almost blew this out of proportion. It's like, I but know, I almost died. I know you must be pretty shaky right now, but but you really screwed it up for us, yeah. and uh, we can't let that happen again. Yeah. I know it's a it's a mean trick to pull on someone who just almost drowned. Yeah, um, it really is, and you know, uh, thankfully, thankfully that didn't happen. But uh, yeah, I know what you mean. I mean, um, God, yeah, that episode. I'm trying to remember. We, I think that was. Definitely one of the first few that we filmed. It, it, it honestly, it seems like so long ago. We've been doing this show for, uh, you know, three seasons, but over the course of just over two years, and it feels like we've okay. been doing it for like 15 years, which is good. I mean, in the sense yeah. that, you know, <laughs> the people that we work with, it feels like we've known each other for like 10 years and, and all that stuff. Because, you know, when you live in, you know, when you spend that amount of time in Newfoundland and you're on location and, uh, you know, you make friends and it, it sort of becomes like uh, like summer camp in a way. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Which is great. But but yeah. 
I'm I'm waiting for them like so I know like the main character I might butcher the name here because it's there's so many names I think it's uh, I always call him Reardon just to I, I, yeah because I don't want to butcher it but it's like uh, or or it's just blank is it a uh, Johan Johan Reardon yeah is there the, you go Yo- Yo- Johan Reardon the third Johan yeah <laughs> John there yeah. you go but yeah. it's I I remember seeing him in a, in like a movie right where it's like yeah. he's this ex jock that kind of it gets banged it gets banged up and then treats the girl like a total shit bag and then at the right. end it's fine but i'd love for her to make a cameo somehow where she's like eh, just uh, uh, just pure humor to me where it's just like sh- she just comes back it's like hey you turn into something after being like this pre-. and then it's like you're kind of ruining the whole story here yeah. this is a different this is a <laughs> yeah. different show this is a different <laughs> show yeah but i yeah. i do like how you kind of use the social media aspect to it too like I, for a while there, and it could just be me and the algorithms of how it works, but I was like, man, it's like I'm not getting a lot of Hudson or X posts. But I do like for fans, especially the younger fans that watch it, you get to see uh, kind of Rex's tricks or how things are getting yeah. done on the show. Like I, yeah. going through glass, I was like, are you kidding me? This glass. That, this was, like- that was wild. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. We shot one. We we did one. Like th- that's the thing is, is a big. Uh, you know, a big attribute to this show is how, like, how great the dog is, obviously, and and but it's a testament to the team, right? The Sherry and and uh, and her team. We did we did one, we did a stunt uh, close to the end of the season where, you know, I won't give too much away, but it was it was wild, and it you know it's it's dog and detective, you know, Superman diving at the you know at the same time, and and you know what what she's able to put together, and so you know, it's, it's great. And it's great for fans to see. And, and we really, you know, we, we could be for a show about, for a show that centers around a dog. Um, we just lucked out with like the best dog yeah. and the best team, you know, ever. So it's, it's, a, it's not an easy thing to do. And, and it's, you know, um, I mean, they say never work with dogs and never work with kids. I don't believe that after, you know, after doing yeah. this, um, it's, it's pretty amazing. So yeah, I do love that. That's a big part of the social media and that people get to see how it's done and how, you know, how they work. Well, no, like I, like, you know, kind of full disclosure here. I mean, we've, we've interviewed Earbud, uh, the littlest hobo and yeah. uh, wishbone and believe me, those guys are just complete assholes. Like, were, I could see were, I could see Airbud like sitting here smoking a cigarette and you're and he's just like <laughs> Yeah. No, like surprisingly Wishbone was very demanding. He was yeah. like, dude, do you not did you not know I was famous on like PBS kids? I was like, Wishbone. It's always, it's come always down. the it's always the B-list child actor dogs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. come down, Wishbone. Like yeah. I I'm I invited you on to talk about Wishbone. Like, why are you giving me why what why are you complaining that your water is like dirty? Like I yeah. clearly it's like, <laughs> it's like I, I interviewed Wishbone. He was hammered. Yeah, <laughs> and he he was a terrible terrible person. Um, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, sh- shout out to Wishbone. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I, it's it's funny because you know when you're of course when you're bringing up about dogs and and doing stunts with them, like does it ever get? I'm not going to say annoying or uh, nauseating, but like, are there times where it's kind of like, I, I know the trainer's really good with them per se, but yeah. are there times where it's like, geez can you just get through this one scene please? Or like, can well, we try something different? So it's not as difficult for that dog to do. Right. Yeah. You know, there's obviously mo- strenuous moments. Right. And, and the thing is too, is that we have to look after the, the dog's well being, and that's, you know, yeah. that's what Sherry does. So, I mean, you know, there's, there's days where they can work certain stunts might take a little bit longer or, or things like that. Or, or, you know, I mean, as you know, being a Newfoundlander, you know, a big part of what can make our shooting schedule difficult are the elements, right? Or or weather, weather, right? (laughs) So if there's something that doesn't work, you know, we we might have to reshoot it in in the studio and and do some problem solving. You know, I will say that when I first joined the show, I remember we filmed a scene where, and I wasn't, I wasn't used to, because what, what we'll do is if we have a, you know, a master shot with, with all of us and with, with diesel, um, in order to get Diesel to look where we want him to look, Sherry has to has to be like talking over the dialogue. And and I remember having never worked with a dog before, kind of being, you know, shocked. It was just like, is this, you know, I, I wasn't used to it. Um, yeah. And and I'm like, are we like, is this going to be like ADR? What's what's going to happen? But you, you, 
you know, you get used to that really quickly. And they've also gotten really good at, you know, you do the master and then Diesel will relax and then and then they'll get all the close ups and we'll kind of get back into the scene and do our thing and, and stuff. But but we've definitely for the most part, we we've definitely found a really good uh, a really good rhythm with with how things are done. And and I mean, it only took 48 episodes. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, we, we found it pretty early on. And uh, and yeah, there's there's going to be tough days and there's going to be days where things might, you know, might not work how they were maybe planned or maybe seen on the script or, or however, but, but I feel for the most part, it, it works out in the end. No, I, I understand, especially when you're saying like about, you know, the joke there of like 48 episodes in, like, listen, we're hundred and something episodes in and I feel like I'm only hitting my stride now, but my mic clearly doesn't do a great job. My, my mic. Yeah. My <laughs> mic clearly says otherwise. Yeah. Just like, you know what? You told yeah, me 100. My mic is like, you told me 100 episodes were done. Why did yeah. you do this? I can't yeah. hold up this. I can't hold up this conversation anymore. I'm like, clearly you're not. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, it's it, no, it, it's but that's the thing. It's like, you never know. There's just going to be days, right? Where, you know, you doesn't matter how, you know, how long you've been doing something or how, you know, how much of um, a routine you get in it. It's days are going to be different and things are going to change. And, and yeah, we deal with that quite a lot on the show and, and, you know, we're able to adapt to it pretty quickly. And I mean, especially too, you know, season three, we filmed, we were able to film in a pandemic, which is, which is wild. You know, we were, um, I'm hearing that you guys are at like alert level two right now. Yeah. yeah I mean, so, in fairness, Justin, I kind of keep out of the news. Like, I, I mean, yeah, I, fair. I, no, I, I, I get keep it, my man. head out of the news, but yeah, I think I that is level it. two. Yeah. It's, there's only, so, well, in these days, there's only so much news you can take, <laughs> you know, it's, I do the same. I, I, I look at the bare minimum and I, you know, there, there just comes a point where you have for your own mental health and emotional health. You have to, yeah, like, again, like I'm, I'm up on it. It's not like, you know, I'm not like dismissing it and saying like, Oh, well, who cares? Like I'm up on like, say, say the shooting in Colorado or whatever. And you, you yeah, of course. feel bad. Of course you have like an opinion on that, but like for the most part, it's like, okay, uh, that's, that's like a major thing that of course everyone's going to know about that, whether you're up on it or not, yeah. like you see it. But like, if someone's telling me day to day stuff where it's like, Hey, we're in like day one, day two. Some people that's big because yeah. now they're getting, but like to me, I'm like, dude, I work from home. I like, I'll go out when I want to. I'll wear yeah. my mask. You've but, like found your stride working from yeah, home. Yeah, it's, at this point, yeah. I did. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Yeah. And, and like definitely, yeah, these, I mean, these stories that come out of, of these, these shootings and stuff. And, and it's important to be, to be aware of those. And, yeah, I mean, what I what I mean too, especially is is the stuff relating to COVID because you know you look, you know, I find myself looking. I'm like, okay, how many cases are in Ontario today? Yeah, and I get into this habit of of seeing the cases rise and then seeing the cases drop, getting a little hopeful, and then seeing them rise again. And then after a while, that's when I have to just be like, okay, you know what? You just got to do your part. You just got to do what you got to do, and and try to, you know, try to stay afloat and all this. COVID craziness, but, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's nuts. And, and, you know, you find ways to try to keep yourself occupied and, and, uh, but yeah, but, but back to, yeah, back to the, you know, the thing too, is that with, with season three, we really had to figure out um, how to do things in this new world. And I think we were one of the first, um, one one of the first project uh, productions to kind of come back uh, after the lockdown last year, and um, and it was so on top of like all the elements and on top of the weather and on top of just day to day issues that you might come across, we were also dealing with this whole extra you know umbrella of COVID that was lingering over everybody, right? And and um, you know I, it's it's good. It was I mean the fact that we got to do, you know, film in Newfoundland where it was relatively safe. And, and I know you guys had a bit of, you know, a bit of a surge recently and, and, <laughs> but for the most part, it was, we felt comfortable and we felt, you know, that we were, we were pretty well protected. Um, yeah. Well, that's, that's good. And I mean, of course, yeah, it's like, we're, we're, I think they're talking about like open the Atlantic bubble, but like, it's all yeah, like just yeah. slowly, like, getting things back to normal, which is good. But I do like, you know, cause at some points when it first started with COVID people are kind of like, okay, well, 
it's only two weeks, not a big deal. But then it kind of got into, okay, Jesus is long term. And yeah. I remember a lot of the like musicians and I guess uh, some of like the children's entertainment per se, like I know Emma Watkins from like the Wiggles, Jeremy Fisher, oh, yeah. Yeah. that's like, you know, from Ottawa as well, that does Jeremy Fisher Jr. They're like trying to find innovative ways of like, okay, like crap, like how are we going to keep this afloat? Yeah. And then they, yeah. they went on Instagram live, like that became a new platform for them. Totally. So. Totally. That was the thing. Like, and especially in, in Newfoundland where music is such a, a big part of the culture too. And no, it's not. What are you talking about? Yeah, so what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? There no. There, what's what is what is that? What, yeah, what, what are, are you what, talking about? I've never heard of Great Big C. Or what are Kelsey what are mandolins? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but that's the thing. It's but it was a new. It was totally a new thing. I remember lockdown started, and my brother and I had tickets to go see uh, this band, the Decemberists, play. And they were supposed to come to Toronto and do like a Roy Thompson Hall thing. We just read it. We're like, oh, they're doing like an Instagram stream. It's like that's the new that's the new way to look at a con to watch a concert now. Yeah. And it, but it, I mean, thank God for that. Thank thank God that technology is at a place where you can do that because if this was you know during the Spanish flu and everybody had to you know you can do stuff like this like video chats and Zoom. You know, we would be writing letters to each other. <laughs> <laughs> try to, I, I, try to make old, a podcast you, out of uh I, i'm old i'm old fashioned that way but like yeah. you know what i have seen where tiktok has oh man tiktok to me is just like uh but i have seen tiktoks yeah. where it's like a 16 or 15 year old being like i wrote a letter and then they send it and then you get updates like every time someone responds i'm like that's cool i guess yeah. but to me i grew up at, i think you're 92 i'm 91 yeah, 92, for, yeah. yeah so like i look at it as a kid and like geez i grew up watching like wrestling and then you it was like a rush to the couch to watch just say like the family oh, yeah. channel for certain things because there's no record there was no playback you you've seen it or you missed it yeah but i yeah. remember watching like channel 70 and it was like just pay-per-view where it was like giving you the pay-per-view like previews yeah. and i'm sure people will look at me and be like no wonder he grew up to be like a weirdo because i didn't order it like i didn't order it i just like watched the previews over and over and over again someone's like you can order that and i'm like man this is kind of silently comforting where i can just see the preview yeah. and then it's like going to a hotel and you're you're watching like the hotel channel and you're like oh yeah. i could i could pay 24.99 to watch cats but yeah. i'm not gonna do that i'll just i'd rather watch the trailer 90 times I yeah <laughs> i and, and i remember going to toronto for like a wrestlemania i think it was like 2003 but we were living or yeah, we, we went up there and my brother's friend kind of let us room there. And they were like kind of weirded out. There was like, I was probably 13 or 14. And all the stuff that you can watch on TV and like, geez, WrestleMania is right around the corner. Don't you want to, or sorry, SummerSlam's right around the corner. Don't you want to like watch things of wrestling? No, I'm yeah. watching like the hotel lobby channel where like you watch people come in and out of the elevator and they're like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I'm just hoping someone slips or like something interesting happens. So right. like, that's not normal. I was like, just leave me be. Am I bothering you? Like, yeah, I'm not doing harm to anybody. Just like yeah, I'm, like if anything, you should be happy that I'm silent here. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I I totally get what you mean. But I want to talk a little bit about mm -hmm. your favorite parts of the show. Like, you know, of course, playing the character Jesse. You mentioned a of course that you're more or less in the studio more than mm -hmm. like doing the the stunts and um, things with Diesel or Rex. Right. Uh, but what's some of the stuff that you kind of enjoy about the show and like something that drew you to, Oh yeah, this is something I want to do. Well, I, I mean, I had never played uh, a cop before. I mean, I, I don't know if you'd call Jesse an actual licensed police officer, but, <laughs> but I, I, I never, a snitch. Yeah. <laughs> no, he's, yeah, exactly. He's a snitch. <laughs> um, uh, so I, that was exciting to me. Um, I'd never been to Newfoundland before. That was exciting to me. Um, Honestly, my favorite parts, I mean, I live for the episodes that Jesse gets out of the studio and gets to do, like that, that uh, undercover student one was one of my favorites to shoot for sure. And we, we have some fun ones this season as well. Um, but, you know, I, it's, it was a new territory for me in the sense of, you know, this is a procedural show. And um, in terms of the, it, it was a lot of dialogue, a lot of dialogue for Jesse, you know, to explain what's going on and and um that took a little bit of time to kind of get used to um but that's the thing i honestly my favorite like one of my favorite parts are the people that i'm working with um 
because you know we work long hours uh we do a lot of episodes and we're you know i'm away from home i i usually fly back and forth you know back in the olden days before covid um but you know this this season i i lived in newfoundland for six months and uh it was sort of but you know i couldn't picture doing that with like any other group of people because we're all you know there we have a blast in the studio, especially, especially the four, uh, the four of us. Um, because you know, there like somewhere there's a blooper reel that is just longer than I want to see those. Bloopers. I want to see it too. And I really yeah. think, you know, I don't know who to talk to, but I, I really think we should release some sort of blooper reel. And there's even, there's all this B roll footage of us trying to get these little look at us, which is it, Sherry will just be like, okay, Justin, just call like, call his name and make a sound, like make a high pitched sound. So he would do like a, you know, a head cock oh, or yeah. something. And uh, so there's, there's somewhere, somewhere there is uh, hours of footage of us making like high pitched, ridiculous noises to try to get Diesel to look at us. Um, so, I mean, that that's sort of grown to be my favorite thing is just this, you know, the banter that we have and, and, you know, we, we get along great and, you know, we've kind of gotten to a part where we're, we also start to establish these character relationships in, you know, in this show, because a show that is, you know, a show that's designed to be a procedural, you're, it's going to be about the case and it's going to be about these people are here to solve this case. And um, so, you know, once in a while they'll, they'll show glimpses of, you know, these character backgrounds or what these, but you know, the, there's also a lot of fun in sort of coming up with that ourselves and creating that ourselves. And, and, you know, it, it also really, it, it came naturally for the most part because we just get along really well. Um, except for Johan Reardon. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just, awful. He's just, he's just a pain. He's just a pain. Yeah. But yeah, so if, if that's a long winded answer for. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I like it. I, I was going to, I was going to mention it because like, you know, in, in future episodes, when you're coming up with say season, say season four, season five, yeah. I mean, I'm going to put my name in the hat and say, if you ever come up with episodes that are involved in Witless Bay or a podcast, oh, sure. or, I mean, I, I want to call, even if it's like, even it's like, Brian, what do you, what is, what's something that you want to do? I'm like, well, I kind of want to throw Jesse in a river. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but he's, he never I'm leaves. Game. He never I'm leaves. Like, I don't care. I will kidnap yeah. him and throw him in a river. But hey, what's, the, what's episode. the whole episode? Oh, there's got to be an episode. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> like a podcast, like a podcaster in Witless Bay kidnaps. <laughs> <laughs> the techie, the techie like, that's not even a crime. Why are we why are we invested in this? It's like yeah. okay. It, it, it sort of becomes almost like um like a king of comedy storyline where <laughs> you hold me hostage to to do this podcast. Yeah, That'd yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, no, listen, like yeah, I, I'm great. all for it. I'd I'd love to be like a and somewhat of a feature on the show, but that's just yeah. that's just me pitching myself per se. But I'm sure we, I, we're gonna have a lot of episodes yeah. left <laughs> where there's gonna be a chance for something like that for yeah. sure. The the other thing I kind of would really like to yeah. a little bit get it, get interest or talk to you a little bit about this is when you're talking, I guess, uh, about Hudson Rex doing the episodes, there's a little bit more than just acting. Of course, I've seen on your Instagram that there is a lot of, you do a lot of singing, you do a lot of kind of a little bit of a comedy. I seen like the quarantine workout or like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, I was like, okay, like I'm, <laughs> I'm invested. Can yeah. we use this as a character? Can we like yeah. you know have this somehow involved in the show? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's the thing. It's I uh, especially like in these COVID times, like it goes back to me trying to figure out ways to keep myself occupied and from going crazy. But um, music has always been a big, uh, big part of my life. Uh, you know, I just sort of grew up in that. You know, listening to my brother's a musician and and. Uh, um, that's always been a thing. Um, it's always been there. Um, and yeah, I mean the, the comedy videos, uh, you know, those were, that was a fun little opportunity that, that came up. I mean, comedy is sort of the reason that I, uh, got into acting in the first place. It was, I was watching like happy Gilmore and uh, liar liar and the mask and dumb and dumber and all that stuff. And, and so, you know, that's another thing about Jesse is, is I love, you know, and I love that he's, that he's funny and that he's, you know, he's written to be sort of the comedic relief and, you know, we have a lot of fun with that on set and, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing. I, I, 
I know me personally, like these little, these little hobbies are, are something that just kind of keep me, keep me sane. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's the word I was just about to say yeah. is like you're saying, keep you kind of like in a, in a, a sane state of mind or just a more or less like not going ballistic. And it's yeah. funny that you mentioned like happy Gilmore because uh, actually at Christmas, someone had sent me like a Funko pop. I don't know who, cause it just came in as a mystery and it's right there. It's like right in the back. There's like Conan. Oh, my. oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's right Conan, on. there's Joey and there's uh, what's the other one? I gotta look at myself. Yeah. I think it's John Oliver. Yeah. John Oliver's nice. there too. I didn't know there was a John Oliver Funko pop. That's yeah. Awesome. So there you go. You could, there, there you go. You learned something new. You learned something on this podcast. So that's a win for me. <laughs> that's a win for both of us. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Get to that eBay and Amazon right now and get yourself there a phone. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> there you go. There's the next thing you got to look at is when is going to be Hudson and Rex get some Funko Pops? <laughs> you know what? I, that would be amazing. Uh, I mean, you got to look at it. Like, you know, come on. Newfoundland tourism industry could use that, right? Like, yeah. Use, use your platform, Justin. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get on, get on the horn with the Funko pop, whatever the company name is. Funko there you go. Pop, just the, sure. the Funko pops. <laughs> uh, and just, I'm going to Google Funko pops and I'm going to, I'm just going to get on call waiting yeah. and see what I can do. Yeah. There's a lot of marketing that I can, I, I know it's COVID, but there's a lot of marketing I look at that you could do with like Hudson and Rex, right? Like yeah. of course, Funko pops, you could have like, little like action figures or models or like certain sure, things like yeah. scenes from the, like, even if you did like, again, I, I know the audience, sometimes you gotta look at it and say, okay, well, what is our audience? I'm not going to make it if two people are going to buy it, but like there, there's gotta be things out there. Like I even look at saying like a Hudson or Rex kind of like after the episode, even 15 minute podcast episodes, right. Where like you talk yeah. about the episode or behind the scenes. Okay. Uh, those are like things that are cool and can be hosted by a Newfoundlander like myself. Um, <laughs> Uh, Justin, the, the other thing that's I, I wanted to really talk about, I guess, because when you mentioned about COVID and, of course, like yeah. going from Toronto to Newfoundland and keeping yourself busy, mm -hmm. at any point, did you bring like your uh, a girlfriend or I guess you're engaged now, but yeah. have, have you brought her with you or like does she COVID with you or is it more or less like this is my yeah. time, stay away from me? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Yeah, no, there was a point where I like, you got you to get here. You got to come. Yeah. Uh, she did. She uh, she she came and, and isolated for two weeks and stayed with me for like a month and a half. And um, and it was yeah, that was amazing. Um, we did you know we did Trinity and Port Rexton and and uh, all that stuff. And and yeah, I mean that's it's a long time to be away from family. Um, Absolutely. And and the fact that that was able to yeah able to happen and then and then I came back in December for Christmas and you know it just sort of it splits up the time too which is which is great um does she ever pitch ideas to you of like she wanting to be on the show in some capacity <laughs> i don't i don't think she wants to be on the show at all oh, I, come on. I, I would love I, it would be great you know if she was if she was there and yeah i could have her you know if she was even like a background performer or something like that yeah. I, I would love to just see her you know walk walk in the background and yeah yeah, one day I th I'm gonna I'm gonna start planting seeds and see it. Yeah, see yeah. if I can convince her. Even to... even if like even if it's just like you know this the sister or cousin that you know comes to visit so often because oh, yeah you know like they're they're away in university but like you know you have a spring break or a Christmas break where it's like hey uh, Jesse yeah. it's like your sister's in town and then it's like even if it's like a five second or five minute totally. like thing where she's just in the episode and then at the end even if it's like oh well. They they might have went to her house and kidnapped her. Like you don't have to have her in the scene, but it's like you understand why she was then implemented in the beginning. Yeah, I'm going to bring this up to her as right. soon as we finish this podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, look, look, Brian and I had a conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who is Brian? Why is he having conversations? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know what? I I don't think she would do it. I I would love that. Um, you know, but that's the thing. It's if she's ever looking for something to do in Newfoundland while I'm working, you know, we work long hours yeah. and if it's raining of course, and you know, there's nothing to do, I'd say come to set. When you were mentioning a course about guest stars that you have on, you mentioned about Alan Doyle, like the uh -huh. one that came to mind, I also see like Melissa Critch sometimes does the news aspect of things. So I think that's interesting. Cause like mm -hmm. you're, you're getting them like people know who they are, but yeah. you're putting them in a different platform. I would love it personally love it if somehow you inf implemented mark critch doing impersonations like even if it's like it's like we're looking for alan doyle and it's like that's not alan doyle that's mark critch being alan doyle 
<laughs> like, like, yeah. Like an like, impersonation shop, right? Like you go into a store and like you're looking for, I don't know, like a robber or something. And it's like Mark Critch owns his own like warehouse of, I don't know, funny equipment. And he's like, I can give you an Alan Doyle. And they're like, there's, you can get out of here. <laughs> there, there should be an, epi yeah, an episode where you're, you're trying to catch one suspect, but every time you think it's this one guy, it's just Mark Critch <laughs> yeah. dressed up as this guy. Yeah. You're like, we can't, we can't get anywhere in this case because Mark Critch keeps showing up yeah dressed up as all these different people yeah 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 i you know what listen I'm man by up, by season by with... season 18 we're gonna be if we need yeah. some ideas <laughs> yeah I, I will be i will be like perry chafe of republic of doyle i'll just be there writing stuff down and being like being like we're out of ideas can you go see brian it's like i think brian's out of ideas how many episodes has brian been in by himself <laughs> like has how how many features has brian had yeah, you're right. That's way too many. How is he writing himself into the script and how is it getting by? Uh, <laughs> and it's uh, just, it's so good. Yeah. It's, it's just, he, he's so smart. It's like, I don't know about that last one. The last one he wanted us to do a wishbone remake. And I don't think that works, uh, but to each their own. Uh, Justin, the last thing I guess I want to ask you yeah. to, to wrap it up here is mm -hmm. uh, what kind of things are you looking forward to in, I guess, just, you know, this season kind of wrapping up. Cause by the time I guess this post, it's going to be wrapped up. So I'll, I'll rephrase yeah. it so I can edit that out. But what are you looking forward to in the closing of this season and going forward? Like what, what are some things I guess that you plan or have you pitched anything for yourself to be like, Hey, can I get more involved in this or what? <laughs> um, I don't know if there's any, you know, I'm just, I'm excited to, you know, I'm first off, that's the thing. It's I'm glad that the season has been, you know, so well, well received uh, so far and, and you know we were finishing it up while it was while it was airing, and you know it's not often that that happens. So that that's really exciting. And and yeah, I don't know. I mean, when when the time comes, I'm excited to get back to work, and I'm excited to continue uh, exploring Jesse. And and you know I think there's a lot of a lot more room to uh, to dive into these characters and and you know, and their backgrounds and stuff. So whether we do that, you know, soon or down the road, it's, um, yeah, I, I mean, I'm excited to come back to Newfoundland, yeah, you of know, come one on. day and, and uh, yeah, I, I would just say, you know, in the times, because when you're working, it's, you know, you get this wave of work and then you get this wave of, of not working and, and trying to find things to, you know, what we talked about to do to, keep occupied and and you know i spent a lot of time thinking about you know thinking about the show and thinking about stuff that i'd want to see and and stuff that i'd want to try and i i think it would be great to see jesse get a uh you know maybe get a little promotion be out in the field yeah. get a little police badge yeah i don't think he'd last very long <laughs> but uh we'll see i don't know uh yeah yeah I'm, I'm just excited to see where where it continues to go and and you know you starting you building a show from the ground up from season one and seeing how it's received and seeing, you know, the fact that we've been able to do three seasons in such a short period of time is, is pretty great. And uh, you never know, like when you start a season one, you, you never know where it's going to go. I mean, this show had been, you know, there was the, there's the version of it in, in Europe that lasted quite a long time, but you just, you just don't know. And so, you know, the fact that we've even done three seasons is, is, is pretty amazing. So I, you know, I'm hoping for more and I'm hoping to just keep exploring and keep having fun. I like that. I feel like that should be like, uh, after like Hudson and Rex is done, they should just have like a sequel as it's called exploring Jesse and people, yeah. are like, people are like, I'm a little it's, bit lost. Is this like, you know, I, I worry that it'll be like the Joey spinoff from friends. Like it'll last, you know, six episodes and, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's not people like. Oh, in, we didn't want to know like, anything in, about Jesse. In, in in fairness, in Matt LeBlanc's defense, they turned Joey from like you know the womanizing, you know, like everyone loves loves Joey to like yeah. this like I can't get a date, I can't. I'm like that could have went yeah. that could have went places, but yeah, yeah I, I I'm just I'm just worried that when someone like does a promo for exploring uh, like explore exploring Jesse, it's almost like. Gee, is am I on the right channel? Like, I I didn't pay for this XXX channel. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> like, no, this is not. This is not at all what no, we wanted. No, that's not. That's not. That's not it. Just watch. <laughs> like, watch the thirty second ad. Don't be so close minded. Yeah. <laughs>
That's going to do it for this episode of Tobin Tonight. Our thanks to Justin Kelly for coming on to the show. Remember, you can find past, present, and future episodes on TobinTonight.com, Spotify, and iTunes. Follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, and leave a comment or two. For Tobin and myself, this is Jacob saying thank you for listening and good night.